All right, so this is a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit Edition. This is one of my reps cars for Focal Illusion of Moscone. And what we wanted to do here was to install a lot of the Illusion audio speakers into the car and have it in a sense where it is uh, displayed to where you can see what is actually installed. Uh, like most installs that we do here, we wanted to keep the integrity of the OEM intact. In the rear, this is what we came up with here. So looking at it, we have three Moscone Zero amplifiers. Uh, a 03, a 03, and right behind that panel, we have a 01. The 01 powers the subwoofers, the two 03s power the front stage, and there's a single Moscone Pico amp, which is powering the rear Illusion coax speakers. Behind this panel here, we have a Moscone 8 to 12 DSP, the Aerospace Edition. Uh, it is behind here, so you can Remove this panel here for easy access there without removing the entire side panel. Same thing with the zero one. We can remove the entire panel there to gain access to uh, the gain and all the, all the necessary pieces that you would need to as you're tuning. As for this panel here, this pulls right up. There are magnets embedded in this panel all the way around. And as you can see down here, there are a bunch of magnets embedded into this little step that I created in order to make this panel easily removable for access to the zero amplifiers. Here in the center, we have this really cool Summit logo and it is mounted hovering over a press grill that is a half circle, which I thought would be really cool. I put some lights on each end just to light up this area here so it really gives it a sense of depth. And uh, the texture of the grill with the lighting really uh, kind of complements the carbon fiber of the subwoofers here. There's a single little RGB strip behind the Summit logo which correlates with the rest of the uh, cycling of the lights in the car. Right here we have two Carbon C12XL subwoofers. Tremendous subs, great power handling. Uh, this enclosure for the subwoofers actually goes all the way down. It's stacked and goes underneath the amplifiers. Uh, as you can see here, this is kind of my way of building it. I laid fiberglass down on the original pan where the spare tire was. Then from there, I stacked birch up using birch because it's lighter and uh, obviously more weather resistant than say MDF. Stacked it all the way up. Uh, it was then covered in carpet. The sides were all wrapped in Focal BAM material and then it was placed back into the tub. And that was more or less my base for building all this trim up from there. And uh, like I said, everything is just very easy to get to. So even though you know, a lot of people might have their hands in this. It's it's very easy to take apart and put back together. You can just take the trim out to get to the amp. Uh, you can disassemble all this stuff without really having to do any kind of hard work. So yeah, this panel just pops up and then you can see exactly how everything is put together. I uh, put some Alcantara suede behind that press grill that way you don't see the wiring which is right right behind it where the amplifiers are so maybe the coolest part about the rear of the trunk is we can take the floor the OEM floor and put it completely back down and now we have a functional trunk you can lay stuff back here no problem, doesn't take up any room. You never know anything is really installed. Um, you can just put your stuff back there. And a lot of people ask, does this really affect the sound? And the answer to that is no. As long as they're mounted down far enough and this panel doesn't vibrate, 
meaning you're not gonna hear the noise that it makes from the vibration of the subwoofers, then you're fine. The wavelength of subwoofer frequencies are so long that something like this is not going to really impact the sound. Um, again, as long as you just don't have any vibrations or anything that resonates back here, you're not gonna be able to isolate that noise, meaning the sub is gonna image better up front. So yeah, as long as this doesn't vibrate, um, you are 100% okay. It's not really gonna affect the noise at all because of the, uh, the length of the wavelength for subwoofer frequencies. So these are the front doors here. And we had to do quite a bit of modification in order to get this uh, eight inch carbon uh, C8 in here. And the thing about the Jeep uh, door panels are, is that they're all molded plastic. As you can see here in these pictures, it's basically one big cover that bolts onto the metal of the door. And that presents a challenge because it's it's fully molded. It's not like it's a big piece of sheet metal where you can cut the hole bigger, make a flat adapter, and then from there you're good to go. Um, it's an easy uh, adaption from say a six to an eight or six by nine to an eight. In this case, I had to make a, uh, a PVC ring that bolted to the door that fit all the tolerances and the variances of the plastic door panel. So that presented a big challenge. In order to do that, my area here got bigger, which means I had to make a new grill if I wanted it to look good. Um, the OEM grill just really looked terrible in order to display it. So a new grill was made, and this here is a little body line, which I've incorporated uh, into every trim piece that I've done on the car. When you look in the back at the trim in the trunk, every piece of trim has the same body line somewhere on the panel. So I try to keep a sense of consistency. Now this gold here was made to match uh, all the other trim on the vehicle. So obviously this is the OEM trim color here and here. So we paint match that to all the trim that we did. Uh, this is a new piece of leather, which we were able to track down very very difficult but uh, this is a new piece this is a piece of PVC as you can see here this is how the trim is made it's a piece of P PVC chamfer on the edge rabbit on the inside uh, the rabbit is deep enough in order to hold the trim here and on the back of this trim we have magnets which then magnetize to the grill which holds the trim on that's how this piece here is en engineered looking further into the car we have the A pillars here, and this was also quite a bit of a challenge. Um, I wanted to create a body line like I did on all my other panels on the pillar. So what you see here is basically this portion of it here was a piece of PVC that was trimmed to this inside, and then it was laid on top of the pillar, and then heat formed around the, the pillar uh, glued in place and then from there it was bodywork. So this here what you're seeing here is that is the outside of the OEM pillar. Uh, this is what was added added on to the pillar. So we took Alcantara suede and we wrapped the entire pillar. The speaker that we chose here was an Illusion Carbon C3X which is a three inch point source speaker which means the tweeter is mounted right in the cone of the mid. Uh, the, the amazing thing about these uh, tiny mids is they played very, very low for the size of speaker it is. We did the grill and the trim to match what you see here on the tweeter. So it has the same exact DNA. Um, Unfortunately, this right now is not functioning. This is the factory tweeter, but we just decided to keep it there because it, you know, it, to get rid of it and to remold it black doesn't really make much sense. You know, this primarily looks like a mid, that primarily looks like a tweet. Um, but we wanted to keep the same DNA so it looks 
a hundred percent uh like a factory option like these these came here with the car so how the factory radio works is it outputs its signal into pack audio's new integration piece which then takes a full range signal from the factory radio and outputs it three five volt uh analog inputs into the Moscone 8 to 12 DSP. So this truly sounds like an aftermarket radio. We don't have to necessarily fix the signal going into the Moscone. We just have to fix the, uh, the ambient curve from what we're hearing inside the car, which is pretty cool. So there are two presets that we have loaded into the Moscone. We have preset one, which is the factory radio. We have preset two, which is the AMAS. And what the AMAS is, is a, it's a Bluetooth chip that runs digital. So you have a digital connection between your phone and the DSP. And there's no downsampling, no compression taking place between your phone and the DSP. So in other scenarios, even this one, uh, you are streaming music from your phone straight to the DSP truly bypassing anything that is with the factory radio. So the sound quality and the resolution of preset two, in this case, AMAS is much greater than the factory radio. So looking up here, this is the Moscone Mini DRC, the mini controller, and we molded this into the sunglass holder. That way you can make any adjustments, flip it up and you're good to go. Flip it back down and you can make your adjustments. So these are the speakers here in the back and what we chose to put back here are the Carbon C6 coax set. Um, we still had to make a adapter ring for this just like we did with the front, but a, to a much lesser scale, a size that already kind of could adapt to this, the space that was there. Uh, we used acrylic with some inserts in order to bolt the speakers to the insert finish it off with fast rings and behind the front door panel uh, door skin and the rear door skin we use sound dampening on the inner and outer door skin we also use a product called tile from black hole which again you can get through your orca distributor and what that does is it stacks in a checkerboard pattern and what that's going to do, it's going to it's going to break up any kind of reflections on the back wave for your mid range, and it's going to make it sound much better. It does make an improvement. Uh, it also adds weight to the door, so it does, you know, kind of sound dampen the door better because it's going to add weight. It's going to add rigidity to that door skin.